Here in Mr Chippy's workshop is our rather scruffy Sun 401 which nevertheless was serviced. It's a very basic set, it's high low power, square shot on off volume. I seem to recall that when you print transmit there's an LED which lights up in the meter. Oh, it's got a public address, has it? How's that activated? Oh, yes. So you turn the squelch down, and there's a switch position for public address. I forgot about that. So, we've got a green sticker on it, so it has been serviced. It doesn't have a detachable power lead. But it is made in Japan. So we're going to open it up. Unsoldered the speaker. It's a radio that uses a relay just there, heat sink for the, I think that's the output transistor. I think that's the, uh, no, it can't be, it's going to be part of the voltage regulator, isn't it? That. There's PAs down there. So it's uh, quite a rat's nest, but it uses an LC7137. I, when I did the uh, D'Amico convoy, and we, uh, when we were doing these years ago, we just started doing these videos, I have no idea and can't remember what we did to it, and I'm not going to review that video, so we start afresh with this one. So we have a totally blank mind and I don't prejudge its performance or anything. I've taken the bottom lid off to see whether there's any screen printing of writing to give us a clue to who made it. But there isn't. So, because we've got the instruction book, we've got a scan of the instruction book, I've got the circuit diagram and I've got the specification. And it says it's a 4 watt radio. And it says that it should do 0.5 of a microvolt for 20 decibel synad on the receiver. So we'll see whether it does that. So we'll go into the RF workshop and we will see what we can do with it. So here we are in the RF workshop with the Sun 401. Now looking at the circuit diagram we've got quite an elaborate um, amplifier arrangement from the audio coming in from the microphone just there, goes through a transistor and then four stages of amplification in a Toshiba TA75558. There's a lot of fives in that and then it goes up to the uh, um, VCO to do the FM with the vario cap diode. So I find that quite elaborate. And we've got a preset there, and we've got a preset there. So I'm got my fingers in so you can see that. I've got preset there, preset there. So I think one's mic gain and one's actually deviation. I know I've done the D'Amico Convoy one. I know it's the same radio, but I don't look back on the videos and I start these afresh. And that way we have have different ideas. We also notice there's two ceramic filters in the 455 kilohertz section there, which I find unusual. And the IF doesn't get its 10.24 from the synthesizer down. Oh, zoom out so you can see what we're doing. Normally, CB radios. Uh, wherever the synthesizer on this says it's an LC7137. Um, yeah, well, it's there somewhere. Yeah, it's just there. It's just under there. Um, the normally the 10.24 um, reference crystal does that, and then there's a a part of that taken off to go and do the IF. 
but it has its own reference crystal which is there. You then have a voltage regulator and it's just done a different way. Unfortunately you also have a relay which is down there but then some current sets have a relay which I also find disappointing. And the PA is somewhere over here. So it's, it seems to be quite a sophisticated set but it's a uh, who made it? I don't know who made it. But I don't know whether it's that they there aren't many around, but do you know what? I've never had one in for repair. So I own a Domico Convoy, I own a Sun 401, but I've never had one in for repair. So I don't know what they're like. This is one we bought, as I said, off eBay for a tenner in a bit of a rusty cabinet, which we gave it a quick spray over, but there you have it. So I'm going to work on the transmitter. That's what we're here to do. And this is a set I serviced when I bought it about 16 years ago before I started doing these videos. So we've just switched the power supply on and it's we'll just change that to channel 20 so we're in the centre of the band. Meters lit up and we want it on high power and let's see. Now I've been working a little diagram out from the circuit and I know what got a jolly good idea what does what right so let's go into transmit and see what happens oh what we'll do I've set up another camera on the uh, test meter so we'll just select that get in the way of the camera So transmit starts with T3 and T3 according to my reckoning and T3 is hidden under all this wiring here. So we're going to go into transmit and somehow get the tool down there without damaging anything. Right, well, having sorted out the microphone problem, I can't believe that. Why would a wrongly wired microphone be attached to the radio? And it's not one we've wired, so that's weird. So, having wired the microphone, we can now go into transmit. And... It's interesting, we're seeing nothing. So, I don't know whether it, the sticker on the back of this radio is lying, but as presented, this radio is doing one and a half watts. Mm, can't speak, one and a half watts. So, according to my blurb, wherever I put it, We start with T3, which is under the wiring harness. Now oh, there's something loose down there. Thank <laughs> you. 
so we have a loose wire somewhere or a dry joint so that needs looking into Let's see whether we can carry on like this so we've done T3 T4 for peak Sorry, that was T8, that affected the receiver, T4. I'll just move the radio so you can actually see what I'm doing. So having done T3, we now move on to T4. Which isn't showing any effect. T5. T6 and then over to the PA Well, we really need to get to the bottom of why we're only getting one and a half watts because it's, it's well, we've managed to get two out of it, and why we have intermittent transmit. There's something loose in the wiring. So what I found, and I hope this is it, is a broken away piece of track. So it's absolutely rattling around so we'll just turn off the power unsolder it and hopefully just uh, a little bit of a scrape round so there's somewhere to solder it to Hopefully we've now got transmit. Let's put the power back on. I'll tell you what, folks, we haven't. <laughs> well, that was a corker, but uh, it's not fixed it. Right, we'll carry on looking. So I've generally gone through it for dryer joints with a high power magnifier, and um, it's transmitting all the time now, so that's good. But I haven't got to the bottom of why it's transmitting on such low power. So we'll go through that alignment again. So we'll start with the bottom one. Which was T3. Move on to T4. That's T3 under the wiring, down there, T4. T5. T6. And then the two coils. And now we are still with two watts. Just see where the meter swings across to. 
looking at that, it's well, there's <laughs> one, two, four, six, eight, ten. It's on six, so that tells us a lot. I just stick it on low power, which should be 0.4 of a watt, and it's about 0.4 of a watt. So yeah, we've, uh, we're going to have to look into why this is not developing the kind of uh, four watts we're expecting, because uh, two watts really is unacceptable. So I think it's time to take the uh, the driver transistor and PA transistor out. It looks to me like this is a set we didn't sort out, but it got labelled as if we had. So I'll look into that. So having removed the whole driver and output transistor assembly, which is the only way because you can't get to the screws unless you dismantle all this, I thought we'd, uh, we'd just swap both the transistors. But we'd check what kind of gain they were doing <clears throat> before we took them out. Because they're obviously working, but there seems to be some degradation um, taking place there. So, looking at the 2SC1306, um, it says here on the data sheet that we are looking at an HFE, when I can find it, HFE of a minimum of 200 and a maximum, sorry, a minimum of 25 and a maximum of 200. So that's what we're looking for. I'm going to swap it anyway, but we'll just put the tester onto that output transistor. So we have an HFE of 22, so that's failed. So I'm going to make a note of that, HFE 22, and now we'll look at the new device, it's an NEC 2SC 13, uh, 2SC yeah, 1306. HFE on this one's 185. So I think that's lost a few of its uh, a bit of its gain, hasn't it, over the 35 years? Somehow, you don't know what bad SWRs it's had, or all that kind of thing. So that's the first one. Now we'll look at the driver transistor, which is a 2SC 1957. And yeah, it's supposed to have a gain of HFE of 90, minimum current gain of 90. So let's have a look at that. So we'll start with the old one. Think that's connected. So an HFE of 63 on that transistor. So I'll just write that down. HFE 63 on the old one. I can't see any make on this. It looks like a a nobody. Right, so we'll connect this up. HFE is now 256 on the new one. So 
So that's 63 to 256 on the driver and 22 to 185 on the output transistor. So I'm going to dismantle this. We'll get those transistors changed over and I'll just look for the heatsink compound and we'll go back into the RF workshop. So here I am a couple of days later having ordered parts and they've arrived because I hadn't got either in stock and the new transistors are now mounted back on the shield and heat sink. One of the hold ups wasn't just the parts but the nylon bolt that holds the driver transistor on. Uh, I had to order rather an expensive kit of them from RS Components. Now that's how it should be and now what we'll do is we'll plonk it back in and solder it all in place. Right, so with the radio back together, we'll just have a swig of my fully UK legal cup of tea. And then we'll probably discover this makes no difference whatsoever. Now we've increased the gain dramatically by replacing those transistors, but there may be other limiting factors and I can't remember what uh, the D'Amico convoy did. And I'm not looking back on the video, so let's see what happens. So we're on channel 20, and we're on. Here we go on to transmit. Um, two and a half watts. So we'll go through the tune up. Okay, so I've meticulously tuned this and we are now greeted with somewhere around 3.2 watts, which is slightly on the disappointing side, but that's what it is. So there we have it. I'll just put that to the 3 watt scale and you'll see it's beyond the full scale deflection. Do that again. Makes that easy to see. So, uh, if you read that on a cheap CB meter it would be doing a good 4 watts but on the selective meter it is 3.2 one thing I failed to mention is there is a, a transmit power control which is variable resistor 1 and is vertically mounted if I can get the camera to see it just down there You just see the preset there? So that's transmit power. So we'll pop that camera. Oh, we'll do deviation while we're uh, while we've got the meter on there. Okay. According to my notes that I've made, deviation is likely to be VR10. And VR10 looks to be in that left hand corner. And can we just see that on camera? It is just down there, there we are, VR10. So, we'll go into, we'll get the little oscillator, we'll go into transmit.
Well, that's an abysmal. There's two and a half kilocycle deviation, so it's about 0.9. Wallo. So let's see whether we can bring that up to somewhere around 2.2. It seems like we've got a dirty preset there. <sighs> now that's over the top. That's interesting. It's sometimes like that when you do these. So we'll set that to two on the oscillator. Wallow testing. That is fine. Now VR9, I think, I'll just make a, a note that that really is uh, that deviation. Look at the circuit diagram, there's a VR9 which looks like it's might gain. So if I can actually find that. Oh yes, it's uh, the one which is uh, sideways on just there. So looking at the actual radio, it is down there. Now there's going to be a tendency for this to disappear to the side of the radio when I turn it. So I'm just going to borrow, here's a little thing, I'll just borrow a little packet of lamps and slide it between the preset and the radio so that when I turn it, it isn't going to short circuit against the side of the case. There we go. I'll go back to the oscillator and we'll see whether it has any effect. Walla. Wallow. Yes, it does. So that's kind of my game by the looks of it. So I'll take my little insulator away. Right, we'll switch that other camera off for a moment. And now we'll look at the RF meter. So we know it's doing about 3.2 watts. And this is calibrated in this one, two, three, four, six, eight, ten. What on earth's that about? No idea. What you're supposed to do when the set's like this is it's supposed to be the centre of the red section. Even though the red section shows on <laughs> on receive. And at the moment, where we are we? So we'll just knock that up a fraction. Because if you set this radio to the truth, which is 3.2, you would end up with the read the needle there, which would give no confidence to the to the user. So I don't know what that's about. Is it um, is it for a country where they're allowed 10 watts and it's a a leftover meter? I have really no idea. But what we will do is set it for the centre of the strawberry patch. There's a good CB phrase. So, um, looking at my sheet, I have come to the conclusion that TX meter is VR3, and VR3 yeah, right, is one that I haven't yet uh, found. <laughs> right, we'll pause the video and go looking for it. Well, behind the scenes, I've had to do a bit of fault finding here because the high-low power switch was doing absolutely nothing. In looking for the um, RF power adjustment um, for the meter, um, I found that the high-low power switch did absolutely nothing. And it turns out that what I was telling you is the uh, power adjustment control back there, which is I've got down as VR1, is in fact low power. And the power adjustment control 
is in fact VR2, which is down there. So I'll just try and zoom in on that. So it's the right hand of those two presets is actually the power control. That was open circuit. It doesn't affect the power, we're still doing less, just less than three and a half watts. But at least we now do have high low power adjustment, which if I just switch it into high power and press transmit, we're banging across. And when we're in low power, we're not banging across. So we've got that right finally. So that is your low power adjustment for the 400 milliwatts output it's supposed to do on low power. So that's preset at the front VR2 was 2K. So I've been able to replace that. Uh, there aren't many places doing skeleton presets and um, that's where we're getting them from which is... Um, oh good grief, it'll come to me while I discuss the other things with you. Rapid Online, thank you. So looking at the circuit diagram, we can see the meter is set there by... I, I can't... These, these are scans of photocopies of photocopies. It looks like 5 to me. But I can't find a VR5 anywhere in the radio. So I'm going to have a look and see if we can find diode... Whatever it is. Dad four. See whether we can find any. I'll have one final attempt to see if we can find a, a power adjustment thing. Well, I have actually found it. It's uh, right at the back. So there's one of the sockets for speaker. There's the preset for low power. And then just down there, right by the back of the chassis, is this VR3 preset. So it's another of these that is going to be right against the case. Let's see whether we can see it actually vertically. It's actually just there. Let's see if I can adjust that without pushing it back to the case so on high power I want the radio to read 4 even if it's doing 3.5 is that psychologically better Let's see whether we can do that There we go. Centre of the strawberry zone, as this would say. Well, that was a corker to find. So I'll make a note of that. For future reference, VR3. RF meter. Right, well, I reckon now we've got a radio that's transmitting. It's doing high low power, it's doing the right deviation. I'll just give it that little while out. Yep, that's fine. So we have actually now covered the transmit, and that has taken some doing. So we've ended up changing the Uh, driver transistor and the output transistor so it's 2SC1957 and 2SC what did I say something 6 didn't I anyway and then we've ended up changing the 2K preset which turned out to be power set as well and we're rewarded with nearly two and a half watts three and a half watts wow nearly as good as a new set. The little touch where you, when you press transmit 
there's a red light on the meter so the it's a plain meter lamp when it's on receive and it's a red meter lamp when it's on transmit so there we are so so all that leaves us to do now is to set the frequency and the frequency as you would expect is the variable capacitor next to the reference crystal which there's the crystal there's the trimmer so in reality it is just down there just zoom in I don't zoom in it might affect the other camera same type of camera and it's so easy to end up with it picking up the same signal so I'm just going to now just that it's not that very far out in fact you know in, in reality you wouldn't change it but just for the sake of the demonstration actually it's a nice quality capacitor this uh, in my experience is that this type is really reliable and rarely needs changing or cleaning so here we go so 27.79120 so it doesn't need adjusting really because it should be 79125. I'll just get my trimming tool. In there. There we go, 29791270 trouble uh, toggling eight. As I've said before, they drop with age, so it's sensible to just knock them a very slight fraction above, then you've got room for it to drop with time. So that concludes everything on the Sun 401 transmitter. It's quite an elaborate voltage regulator circuit. When you start looking at all this, I'll just switch that other camera off. You've got all this voltage regulator circuitry here, which is quite unusual. Uh, and then with that um, high power and then low power, the two adjustments, you only expect low power. There's a lot more bits and pieces in this radio than most. I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing, but it's like there's a lot of thought gone into it. So although it's a bit of a billy no mates, it's uh, and it's a little bit short on power. Well, you know it. Uh, it's still doing more power than quite a few new sets. So thank you for watching, and that concludes the transmit side of the Sun 401. So then we'll do the next video on the receive side of this radio. Thank you for watching.